With HBO's Halo TV series around the corner, fans were so excited to finally see these characters in live action. From the trailers we have so far, it's looking amazing. Master Chief's suit is perfect, and the world just oozes Halo. Fans are excited about this project, but one recent announcement has gotten them pretty annoyed. So what's going on? Well, stay tuned to today's video, as we're going to discuss the Halo TV series will show Master Chief's face. First up we have Halo TV series will show Master Chief's face. One of the biggest aspects of Halo is that we don't really know who Master Chief is. And that's okay. Though we don't really see his face in the games, he has a deep character that is told throughout the story of Halo. Fans are completely fine with not seeing his face, as it keeps some mystery to the character. Some people believe that you need to see a character's face in order to feel something for them. But that's just not true. So the choice to show Master Chief's face in the series has fans confused. It shows that the writers don't really understand the character, even if the set design and world are perfect. Whilst talking about the decision to show Master Chief's face, Kiki Wolfkill explained why it was important to show Master Chief's face, which will be that of actor Pablo Schrieber. I think we set out to tell a character story and a personal story, she said. And once we really got into what that story was, it became clear that you really needed to see the person in the armor and under the helmet. Wolfkill made it very clear, you will see his face. Wolfkill went on to say that she understands and respects those who do not want to see Master Chief's face, but it was important for the story to finally reveal his face. For some people, it's been a moment 20 years in the making, and for other people, it's something that feels very hard to imagine. Wolfkill said, We absolutely respect both sides of that fence, those who really want to see Chief's face and those who really don't. But for the nature of the story, it felt really important to connect with Master Chief in a different way, and that meant showing the face. Fans are very concerned about the project now, and though it shouldn't stop the show from being good, it really shows that they don't understand the character and the story that they're telling. Hopefully things go well with this project, as it was looking really promising before this was announced. So what do you think about it? Let us know down in the comments section below. And now, we have some other television and game news. And now we have, one of the weirdest Resident Evil games is getting an unofficial 3D remake. Resident Evil is one of the most popular game series of all time. We have have so many games in this franchise, and the vast majority of them are just amazing. However, there are some games that people just don't know enough about or have forgotten about. One of those is Resident Evil Gaiden, a 2D Resident Evil game that was released in 2001 for the Game Boy Color. This game is basically unknown and hasn't seen any love from the gaming world in a long time. So, a group of developers has taken it upon themselves to remake this game in 3D. This is titled Project Starlight, and they are trying to upgrade the original game into 3D and use more traditional gameplay elements that we know in other Resident Evil games. Ganon was limited as it was released on Game Boy Color, so they couldn't create a traditional Resident Evil game. One of Project Starlight's goals is to make this game into a better experience for all. In terms of the game's story, it's actually considered non-canon. That means it doesn't play into anything the other Resident Evil games have done and basically never happened in the world of Resident Evil. This makes a lot of sense, especially with how the story-driven in Resident Evil games were and have become. The latest Resident Evil games have become so much more story focused and have become a trilogy in its latest two games going into Resident Evil 9. What do you think about this project? Hopefully all goes well for the developers and we get to see this 3D remake in action. Let us know down below in the comments section what your thoughts are on this. And now, Elden Ring will take about 30 hours to finish. From what we have heard about the game, from those who have played it, and of course press outlets, the main story of the game should take you about 30 hours. This is already much longer than the previous Souls games, and even something like Sekiro, which was already much bigger and more open than a Dark Souls game. However, of course, this will probably be much longer for the main story, if you keep dying over and over again to the main bosses in the game. So, good luck with that. Press has been assured that even the Souls veterans will have a tough time with some bosses and enemies in Elden Ring. Producer of Elden Ring, Yasuhiro Kitao, spoke on the game taking about 30 hours to complete, but of course, you can put even more time than that into the game if you so desire. This will differ significantly by player, but in terms of the targets set during development, the idea is that the main route should be able to be completed within around 30 hours, Kitao said. The game as a whole is quite massive and contains many dozens more hours worth of gameplay, but if we are talking about the main route only, it shouldn't take much longer than that. The biggest thing going into Elden Ring is the difficulty of it, just like any other Souls game. However, because because 
Elden Ring is a more open world. The developers have assured players that there will be many bonfires for you to save your progress at and respawn at if you need to at any point. The game is going to be amazing. Hopefully the game time reflects that as well. Now that the game has been released, it doesn't look like anyone has finished it yet. When they were referring to the 30 hours, it seems like they meant the main story. Many players got into the game and haven't even reached the first boss because they have been exploring the world. The game is just amazing and shows how an open world can work with a game like Dark Souls. Clearly, they were referring to how the game can be beaten without exploring much, but fans are showing that they can squeeze everything out of this amazing game. Fans are already 20 hours in and haven't even killed the first main boss. It's just crazy what a fan base like this can do. Are you playing Elden Ring? Let us know down in the comments section below. And finally, we have the main reason people love Longmire. Recently, Longmire has been brought back up into the discourse of television conversation. And for good reason. Longmire is amazing and fans were discussing what the best thing about it was. One of the main reasons why fans seem to love Longmire so much is because of its morally complicated protagonists. One quote from a fan page goes like this. It speaks to a larger zeitgeist of society. He's not a superhero. He's damaged goods. With the death of his wife and the complexities of his life, but he still tries to get up in the morning and do the right thing. And I think that resonates with people. Because of how the main character acts and his mission to overcome his own personal adversity, fans have fallen in love with him and his narrative. The main character is meant to lead the entire show and guide the audience through everything that happens. If a character is like this, then you have the fans' attention as they really want to see what's going to happen to them across the series. People love watching the shows where they can see the main character progressing. Just look at something like Breaking Bad or Arrow. Though all of these shows are drastically different and don't follow the same themes, throughout their series run you can see a character evolve and battle with themselves. Each of these three series have different outcomes, but the characters still go through hardship and are morally complex protagonists. Walter White is a very complex character, and throughout the series, the audience are conflicted with his actions. A similar situation goes on in Arrow. Oliver starts out the show by killing people. However, over time he changes his actions and becomes much more of a hero figure. Fans love this sort of character design and development. It keeps them coming back for each season and each episode that releases. Well, that's the end of today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know down in the comments section below. It would be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye!